our agreements with China were reached in 1993-96. I'm not even getting into which government, etc. I, mm. I think I try to avoid this, this whole debate, okay? You know, I don't like in foreign policy. Maybe it is because I've been myself so long in this field. Mm. I don't like to necessarily say these people were right and those people are wrong. I don't, don't think it serves the nation well. Okay. But if I do find that others are playing a political game where everything is being blamed on the present dispensation and entire history is being whitewashed. I think the history has to come out. Okay. Now, on uh, the, the question of breaking the agreement or not breaking the agreement, generally countries as a rule, uh, sensible countries do not because what do you need most in international? If you have a reputation as a country which breaks agreement, what do you think is the worth of your agreement? That is China. Where have they kept the agreement with any country? No, no, look, no, no hello. From, or Pakistan for that from, matter. From 1993, 1996. Okay, not a single bullet. No, okay. no, no, forget bullet. From 93, 96 till 2020. Was that agreement observed or not? Hmm. So how can you say, you know, the agreement is not worth a piece of paper and nothing. All agreements must be They broken. took Aksai no. Chin. 1962. 62. Hmm. Between, they took Aksai Chin between 1958 and 1962. Okay. So, if you didn't need agreements, why did you sign them? I mean, you went in 1988. I mean, Rajiv Gandhi went to Beijing in 1988. 88, correct. Okay. You signed agreements in 93, 96. I don't think signing those agreements was wrong. I, I disagree with you. Hmm. I mean, and this is not a political point I'm making. Okay. I think those agreements were signed because at that time we needed to stabilize the border. And they did stabilize the border. Please also note that. So this idea, suggestion of yours that people sign and compulsorily break the next day, that's not true. Hmm. Now, why can we not? Why can we not come to an agreement on where is the boundary? Where? How many rounds of talks? And it doesn't. It's because, non-conclusive. Because when uh, people are the the claims, when any other country's claims are not reasonable. You will not come to agreement. I mean, you and I can come to an agreement if I make claims on you which are not reasonable, but you will concede it because 25 rounds have happened. Hmm. You have to look at, you know, what is what is being discussed as well, no? Right. So, okay. So, look, uh, you know, if I were to sum up the China thing, I mean, please do not, you know, buy this, this whole, uh, I would say, again, I use this word, this, this narrative that somewhere government is on the defensive, you know, somewhere we are being accommodative. I mean, I ask people, if we were being accommodative, who sent the Indian army to the LSE? Rahul Gandhi didn't send them. Narendra Modi sent them. Okay. We have today the largest peacetime deployment in our history on the China border. Okay. And we are keeping troops there at a huge cost with great effort. We have increased our infrastructure spending on the border five times in this comment. So, now tell me who's the defensive accommodative person. In fact, the question you should ask is, who's actually uh, telling the truth? Who's depicting things accurately? Who's playing uh, footsie with history? I think those are the questions which should be asked. Okay, let me go over to uh, Pakistan and there's a number of people who are now e expressing serious concern that here is a nuclear nation which is on the verge of an economic collapse. If that happens, it's in our neighborhood. Are we ready? The influx of uh, people who might come in into our country, how do we deal with this uh, situation where this country could collapse? No, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, Pakistan's future uh, is largely determined by Pakistan's actions and by Pakistan's choices. I mean, nobody reaches uh, a difficult situation uh, sort of suddenly and without cause. So it is for them to find a way out. Uh, our relationship today uh, is not one, you know, where uh, we can be relevant directly to that process. Uh, if I were to, for example, compare it to Sri Lanka, I would say it's a very different relationship. Mm. With Sri Lanka still, there is a lot of goodwill in this country. Uh, there's, there's naturally a neighbor's uh, concerns and worry, but there's also a feeling, look, uh, you know, we have to help them to get through this. Uh, tomorrow, if something happens to some other neighbor, that would 
be the case as well but you know uh, the you know what the sentiment in this country is about pakistan Yeah you know you were talking about these concentric circles when you said the neighborhood and then there's the second uh, one of the most dramatic achievements of your foreign policy has been uh, India's newfound status and reach out uh, to the to the UAE to the Islamic world to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, that's been quite an achievement mm-hmm. when was that decision taken to reach out because otherwise it all that one heard was that OIC has something to say on Kashmir that was the maximum that one heard even though there was this large indian uh, people of indian origin living in the middle east i would say uh, i started hearing it first soon after i became foreign secretary so it would have been early 2015 it is possible that the prime minister may have had some thoughts and discussed it with other people before i came back to delhi i can't i can't uh, watch for it uh, i'm glad you brought that up because uh, if you were to ask me in 10 years give me two three examples of some big changes which have happened uh, in our in our policy uh, i would certainly uh, put uh, our change relationship with the gulf mm. uh, very very high uh, up there on the list uh, why didn't it happen earlier uh, my own sense we want a very very honest answer is i don't think people were strategic earlier mm. i think they, you know when you have a vote bank mentality Uh, you actually you you're not serious about foreign policy and uh, i would say operationalizing it for you it's like a slogan that they are with us or you know uh, so we kind of treated it as that's a place that you know the, the we get our petrol uh, energy from there there's a big community out there and the rest of it was like a like a uh, like a distant you know uh, a goodwill uh, which you needed for your political vote bank calculations i think when you got a different government which said we are you know we we actually want something deeper more strategic with full elements of full spectrum relationship we have the ability today to deliver on lot of issues of your concern as well uh, we are seri- you know part of it one of the reasons why the gulf looks at us the gulf sees today's india as much more credible than the india of 10 years ago and you know as they say that's in spite of india having a right wing government now i would say you know that's that's why you need to think of this kind of labels you mm-hmm. ask people in the gulf do you prefer prime minister narendra modi or any of his predecessors i'm willing to take a bet with you every one of the gulf countries would say i prefer the uh, prime minister modi why i think they think he's a more serious person uh, he is a person who makes who's more credible uh, who's who's actually broad based that relationship hmm. he's done more for the relationship than everybody else and you know i i must once i, I tell you very honestly uh, i i was once at a conference in the gulf and i had some friends hmm. from across the parliamentary aisle with me hmm. and uh, this issue came up and the person from the gulf actually and this was like maybe 2018 19 he said you know these guys he is looking at me he said they've done more in 4 years than you guys did in 40 that's the kind of image there is in that part of the world is kashmir on the table now it used to be i know is yes. kashmir on the table when you deal with uh, countries in west asia now no i, I what do you mean on the table do they speak about it do they ask no. you about it no. no why was i mean look kashmir is part of india i mean that that's it that's that part. it was always a part of india but after the abrogation there was a pakistan had up the ante does that matter at all to these countries no, it doesn't now? come up in any of my conversations it doesn't come no. up okay i'm going to go on to these new partnerships okay <laughs> the new partnerships that are happening you know the quad the i2 u2 <laughs> india seo india asean all these which are happening the opposition tends to say that though india is now partnering in all these groupings where is it going is it just are it's these just talk up, shop it's, it's going well it's going up it's going good so what's the problem that that these are just talk shops and these are places where uh, nothing gets done actually that india doesn't uh, this whole thing about you know vishwa guru and things where india is just posturing no, no, listen the opposition has to say things no they are opposition hmm. why would why would that be the basis for any serious question on your part 
So where where are we headed in as far as G20 is concerned? Uh, it's become no, no, a people's no, movement. No, hang on, make up, make up, man. G, are we talking G20 